I know we put one guy up there, but we got another one coming with them. That's right, because they're brothers. Hey, everybody, our last guest of the evening. They went ahead and personally made sure that I had a World Series ring and a parade in Boston. They are unbelievable yeah. friends, great teammates, two incredible legends in this game. Please put our hands together for Johnny Gomes and Mike Knapp. stage. I don't know. It's an easy top cover band or something. How are you guys? You should be still. You're amazing. Look great, man. Things are good? Yeah. Yeah, we're all good. Is your mic on, Mike? People need to talk to you. Turn my mic off. We'll get there. It's coming. It's home. It's HH3. It's coming. Yeah. Johnny, how are no, you? man, we're great. Right on schedule. Yeah. Right, right on schedule. What's, I mean, new with, what's new with you? What's new in life? What's new? Um, yeah, John Gomes crossover on the other side. Yeah. Uh, coaching. Coaching. Love it. Love Both it. of okay. you guys are yeah. coaching. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, pretty soon here we'll probably be on a squad together and go undefeated. Yep. You know? <laughs> one of these days we'll probably be one of the first 162 and 0 squad. 162 and 0. Yeah. That's kind of our deal. But uh, until then, man, we're just uh, paving the way. Nice. Um, I had a wonderful experience of. Playing in 2013 with both of you guys. Nice part is it's not on TV, so we can do whatever we want. Yeah, it's not live. It's not live. And it was a remarkable, incredible season that you guys really early on, both of you guys really set the tone for that of like how we were going to perform. And you guys really believed and made it and willed us a championship. Yeah, I mean, I think it was uh, it started in spring training. I mean, we started growing our beards in spring training for the playoffs. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just a true story. I mean, we, we even made uh, shirts at All Star Break of uh, out of duck bone. So, um, <laughs> what would you say? Hit play, and uh, everything will take care of itself. A World Series ring on the inside that actually has beard the beard. Yeah. Bearded Woo! brothers. Yeah, bearded brothers. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, we were. It, it's so funny you call it confident, call it conceited, whatever, but I mean, we, we had our eye on the prize, man. And you, you have your eye on the prize at times when there's talent behind you. You know, when there's talent behind you. We definitely had talent. I mean, our opening day, we had, I think, eight guys with playoff experience. Uh, Jake Peavy checks in at the trade deadline. And then, I mean, man, yeah, we, it, it was playoff or bust. I mean, it doesn't matter where they pick you or where they want you. But inside those double doors, we had action. I always remember one of my favorite moments was um, at Fenway Park on the wall of the Green Monster. They have, you know, like these little tile things that they can do the standings, and you can change the standings as to where you're where you're situated. You know? So it's like Toronto was down the bottom, always in Baltimore. <laughs> uh, sorry for any Blue Jay fans. Reality. They're used to it. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> but you said something really funny. The ground screw guy. What yeah. you tell Yeah. We're, yeah. The ground screw guy's gonna have to get used to us at the top. Just paint it. Yeah. Paint it. Paint yeah. Because there's that. You know, just like the numbers. You pop them in. You pop them out. You pop them in. Move third place. So just go ahead and paint Red Sox. We're staying. We're, we're gonna stay. There. And, I, and, I, and like the reason I'm talking about this so much is we went through something as a team that very few teams go through um, and it was really really remarkable we were given the honor i believe to bring a city back from some really crazy stuff that happened with the boston bombing and you guys both collectively led that charge johnny you really really led that charge in a big way um well, it back to like upset. the it's day after they story. caught the gentleman in the, in the boat in our locker room the head of every military organization you've ever had. I mean, that, that, that was heavy. It was heavy hearts. It was actually like looking at it now, like you look at like American history, right? Like 200 years from now, they're going to be talking about this. You know, so we're literally a part of American history. Um, and it's so good to be a part of American history when you're in first place, right? Or first, last place. And I tell you what, I remember, so people want to talk about when David Ortiz gave a speech and all this stuff. And what did he say? 
This is our city. Uh, yeah, this is our city. Um, but man, what, what led up to that? But people forget, like, the, um, the hockey team was in the Stanley Cup, you know, and the hockey team was there, and they went all the way to Game 7, and they were going to win. They were going to win, and it was this fairy tale story, and all of a sudden, they lost. Then what happened? And I was like, I remember. So people want to talk about when David gets things, but like a week later, they lost. And we came to the clubhouse like, oof. Forget like the first month of the season, David Ortiz was hurt. I don't remember that. And my big guy right here just drove the bus. <laughs> yeah, just drove the bus. No one remembered David Ortiz was hurt the first month of the season because old Mike Napoli was driving balls and hitting them over the fence and hitting them off windows at the Sky Dome all the way. You know, people are making love up in section one. Oh yeah. Sweet one twelve. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting interrupting the action. Yeah, we were getting fines for what he was breaking for his home run ball. John manager John was covered. Right? Yeah, all the time. What, what did you learn from that year, Mike? That um, as far as winning and what it takes to win a championship, that maybe you didn't necessarily know before that. Well, I mean, uh, the group that we had, the, the veteran group that we had, was uh, unbelievable. And, uh, for us to come together and, and we didn't care about money, we didn't care about anything else but winning. Yeah, it's yeah. Out of here. It was such a fun group to come to the field every day and, and oh, yeah. participate in whatever was going to go on. And, uh, one of my favorite skits of all time uh, is you coming in. You know, we had a team meeting when we won 10 in a row. We didn't have a team meeting when we were losing. And uh, our favorite catcher came into it. Into this, this I think his name is Jack Hammer. Jack the Hammer oh, came in, uh, drop strap in the oh. catcher gear. And uh, <laughs> gave us some nice rally speed while we just finished a 10 game winning streak. So, uh, we had a players only meeting. You know, normally, when you're going bad, right, you have a players only meeting, like Queen's not doing well. Yep. Players, you see this all the time. They had a players only meeting. We had a players only meeting when we just swept the Blue Jays and went to Tampa. And then John Farrell, our manager, said, What's the players meeting about? And I told them playoff shares. Playoff shares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. Playoff. I remember reading it like we were joking around. We're gonna have a players only meeting because we're going really good. <laughs> Most of the time you'll see when it's going bad, they had a playoff, you know, they had a players only meeting and this and that. We had a playoff or a player only meeting because we were so awesome. <laughs> we just want to continue to be awesome. And I remember we had it about four o'clock and we were watching the ticker on MLB Network. Red Sox was having player only meeting at four. Oh my gosh. What's wrong? And then the coach We're would just ask too us. awesome. Yeah, the coaches would ask, what was the players only meeting about? And we were like, that's funny. It's not a players and coaches meeting, it's just a players only meeting. So yeah. we wanted you to know we would have invited you. We were actually just planning the duck boat parade in July. Right? Yeah. Which route it was going to go, what color Jake was going to buy, all those kind of things. So um, yeah. you guys were both like extremely positive forces as far as not just all of that, but just on a day in, day out basis. Um, what's your belief on just that mentality? like? The, the positive thinking because you can grow yourself in a way to good things happen. I mean, I think that there's, there's so much negative in our game. Um, so, what do you mean by that? Like, I mean, three out of you know three out of ten you're hitting 300, but you go in the Hall of Fame, you're going to the Hall of Fame, failing 70 percent of the time. Yeah. But uh, so, what happens is that you know Man, really we're gonna you know get together and, and have a good time and, and just uh, I don't know, it's just you know together and, and do good. Yeah. My man over here was ready to be like in the Buffalo Bills, right? Like he was with the Texas Rangers. He went all the way. I mean, this guy basically had his name plastered on the side of the Corvette for, you know, World Series MVP. And then the car just, just took it over from the fly ball over Nelson Cruz's head. And coming into camp, couldn't imagine a dude more hungry to get back there and a dude more hungry to win it. I mean, the guy was all the way down at the end and it was so fast from the loss, right? And then I knew my man was gonna be hungry. I knew my man was gonna take charge. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was that was a good time.
then you did it again, Johnny. You went to Kansas City and made sure that happened again. Yeah, we went to Kansas City, so I did it on the East Coast, and I wanted to make sure I did it in the Midwest. Yeah. You know, just for all my barbecue folks in the Central. Uh, yeah. So yeah, man, what a great team there. And it was so cool to see the difference of, you know, World Series teams. Everyone wants to say, like, what's in, what, you know, who, what team is better, or what is in common, and all stuff. And it's funny looking back on it, I say, World Series team, championship teams are all different. They're all different. Last place teams are all the same. <laughs> They're all the same. You can't compare KC to Boston. They're so different, man. These guys went hit, 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 hit. Over here, we're gonna walk, walk, home. We're walk, walk, home. These guys, you look back at game five in the uh, DS against Houston with Trey went, ee, ee. <laughs> A bunch of runs scored after that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, first place teams, they're all different. They're built different ways, they score different ways, they pitch different ways. Last place teams, all the same. Suck, 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 suck. <laughs> hey, I don't even know the answer to this, but your teammate the whole entire year, so never asked because they just sat back in pure enjoyment. How'd the beard type of thing start and, and go to fruition? Because it was, it was magical because you guys were hitting taters all over the place and the beard type of thing. So we had beards growing and, uh, a couple of guys are growing them longer. And, How's it look? How's it look? Am I like, oh, bro, bro, it's getting there. It's getting there. And I go, you don't know you have a beard until you're at dinner with someone, and they go, hey man, right here. Hey man, you got some food on you, right here. Until you get food stuck in your beard and you don't know it's there, you don't have a beard. And I remember dudes coming to me the next day. They're like, dude, someone was like. Yeah, it's wiping, like you got food on your beard. I was like, yeah! Put oh, it on my beard, I didn't know. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> now this guy's got a small hamster zoo in his beard. Look at that. Got like a whole family inside. You feel like, yeah, no, this is yeah. yeah. It took about a beard, yeah. And I remember you guys always like yelling at our trainers because they wouldn't grow beards and they make their beards. Yeah. They just kind of, they just went on and on and on and on. And then, you grew a beard. I did. Oh, yeah. You had a beard. And weeds too. I had way yes. more hair. Than <laughs> Mostly on the back. Kind of looks like Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long bald up here, but just. Kind of it was so funny. It was. It's you know people are confused. Like it was a blur. Yeah. But if you want to tell every story, I'm gonna need a week. Of course. Yeah, I'm gonna need a week. It was a blur, but man, there's so much. I know. In the middle like, if, you, if you now, if you could take everything you've learned over your career and just yeah. go like boom, boom, boom. What's the message that you want to give to the young kids of today's game and what they want to do? I'll start with you, Mike. Really, uh, I mean, straightforward. I mean, put your work in. Um, take it seriously. Um, love your teammates. You know, give back to people that have given to you. And, uh, you know, work really hard. Johnny? Yeah, I'd say tell the kids, say thank you to who got you to the ballpark. Right? Say thank you to your parents, your buddy, your buddy, your mom. Say thank you to them. And what you put in is what you'll get out. 100%. What you put in is what you'll get out. You go there and you these hops get from the job and practice is boring. And then it ain't work. So what you put in is what you'll get out. Well, I'm going to say this. The Boston Red Sox had an incredible team in 2013. I was on that team. We had guys that us. David Ortiz, who had 600 in the World Series. We had John Lester and John Lackey, and we love them both. But we don't win a World Series without both of you guys, and that's a big pass. If anybody does want to dispute that, I'll sit up here all night. But I can't sit up here all night because we got a couple more concerts. But thank you guys both very much for coming up here tonight and joining us, man. My bearded brothers, right here. Everybody, round of applause for Mike Napoli and Johnny Jones.